Many things that could have taken us out. And God still see fit for us to still be here in good health, um, living, man. I think I'm thankful for being able to spend time with my kids this this holiday. Uh, my mother and uh, thank God I've been able to talk to my father and and everybody, you know, this this holiday weekend. Um, so I just thank God for that, man. You know, just breath, life and breath and strength and sound mind, right? So we, I thank God for that, man. I can't can't stop thanking Him and praising Him for that. Amen. I'm right with you, man. I mean, I look um, I look at those pictures. Um, even on that day when I was looking at that car, I was like, man, that was supposed to be worse. That was uh, I wasn't supposed to be here. And just you know, but God, but God, right? Yeah. Just the way that car looks to walk out, and I can still walk, right? I got a bit of soreness, but I can still walk. My vision still works. I'm not broken. I'm not gashed. Like, God is worthy. God is worthy. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, definitely, worthy. definitely worthy. I don't know. I, I, I just thank God for being here. I, I just thank God for my physical health and my strength and and like you said, being able to see, talk, walk, move, all of it. All of it. I just thank God for that because it could have been the other way around. I think about that song from years ago, uh, Mother Charlotte, millions could, didn't make it, but I was one of the ones that did. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the ones that made it because cause it's millions that didn't make it. You know, around the world, not just here where we at, but I am grateful to God that I am still here. I might not like things that's going on here, but I'm still here to try to be that change that's needed here. So I'm just grateful, y'all. It that reminds me of that song, The Love I'm Still Holding On. <laughs> <laughs> says i'm thankful to be alive and i thank god for keeping me here to be able to fellowship with such wonderful people and i thank him for change <laughs> amen definitely gonna get it with god <laughs> amen yeah. amen William was talking about his accident and that years ago god spared me from two accidents mm. where cars were told and i walked away and no injuries you know, sore, but no injuries. God is good. You know, and if we look back, just go back and remember what God has done for us down through the years. We'd have a praise every day because even though some bad things happen, God has blessed us. And look at where we are today. Not always in the place where we want to be, but look how he has blessed us just in this fellowship. Hmm. You know, this is so rare and so unusual compared to what's going on. And God has blessed us to be together, like-minded people. We don't have, you know, this going on over here and that going on over there. It's just with a unity that is so rare. I've never seen it. Never, I've never been in a group like this, and I just thank God. Hmm. But over seven, over sixty years, I've been in different churches, and I've never seen anything like this. And I just thank God. Amen. Amen. His love says, "I am even grateful for what God allows, because He, if He allows it, we will overcome it." And that's true. Victory at the end of the day, right? It's all testing, right? 
Um, it'll never, it'll never destroy you. God does not turn around and test you to destroy you. God tests you to turn around and preserve you, to build you up, right? To strengthen you, right? So, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, quick thing to add, uh, this, uh, this sermon that I'm doing, I am recording. I was hoping to turn around and, um, and do it for, um, do it where my grandma was at, right? Um, uh, my grandma's kind of at, you know, at that point where she's, she's kind of ready to cross and I kind of wanted to make sure, you know, I did, I did a sermon for her. Um, family didn't get back to me in time to, to know if she was, uh, what well, if I can turn around and come by, but you know, I'm recording this so that way she can, she can get this. And, you know, just, a, just the last, a last, a last thing that she wanted. Cause I know if my grandma was completely in her right mind, man, this would, this would completely make her day. <laughs> my, gra my grandma, you do love me. You talk about it all the time. When you got somebody praying for you, when you, you turn around, you try to go the opposite. My grandma, my grandma was praying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I'm so glad they pray for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um. And then going forward, um, we going forward, we um, I know for these Zoom calls, we kind of wanted. We talked about it yesterday in the um the lead in the leadership uh, meeting that we had. Um, want to be able to record the sermons, but of course we want the permission first to everybody. So I, you know, last minute is not a good time to do that. So I got to record it from my phone, not on the Zoom. Um, uh, but going forward, you know, pose it again on Monday, um, and give a proper heads up. <laughs> oh, go ahead, the lovely. Oh, you're talking about for the Zoom thing? Um, I haven't, it hasn't shown, it hasn't shown up yeah. yet. Next year, next year around, like, August or something. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it doesn't feel like it's been a couple of years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it does feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. So, I'm going to get I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into it. All right. So, this is uh this is the second part um of the series that I've been doing which is being salt, right? Again, recap, we talked about turn around being salt and what that truly means, right? What is Jesus what is Jesus getting at, right? And we broke down all the different ways that salt uh it turns around and works, right? You know, salt has many properties that makes it beneficial. Um, the last time we did the series, the first part was talking about flavoring, right? This time, we're going to talk about preserving, right? So, the title for this sermon today is, What Are You Preserving? Right? Because it's important to know, what are you preserving? And, you know, I said it last time. Um, when it comes to that, right, preserving, which is, you know, allow, allowing something not to decay, right, keeping something intact, keeping it fresh, right, keeping it healthy, right, we don't have the power to do that by ourselves, right, um, we need a little bit of help, we need a lot of help, <laughs> right, and so, before I get into all of that, right, I'm gonna back that up with definition this time, right, so now, as we go into preserving, I'm gonna back that up with definition of where, just where I'm getting that, right, so stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, I got y'all. <laughs> so to get an idea we have to understand this right preserving comes in different states right there is a state a level of preserving that god wants us to reach like god wants all of his people to reach right and we got to go through the different stages until we get to that final state and i know you're looking at me like huh but it'll make sense in a second <laughs> So um, there's a level that we're striving to, right? We want to get from preserving to being fully preserved, right? So in order to do that, let's go through these definitions. So the first thing is being a preservative in itself, right? And a preservative is a substance used to preserve food stuff, woods, other materials against decay, even discoloration, even spoilage, right? Keeps it fresh. It keeps it healthy. 
But again, the question is, but what are we preserving? Well, before I get to that, the Bible definition of preservatives, right, is that which preserves or has the power of preserving something that tends to secure a person or thing in a sound state or prevent it from injury, destruction, decay, or corruption. A preventative of injury or decay, right? It's a mouthful. So that's preservative, right? But what are we preserving? I'm going to keep asking that question. I'm staying on task. <laughs> but I'm going to keep going into my definitions, right? Uh, but what are we preserving, right? So when we turn around, we answer that. We get to the point where we start talking about being preserved, right? And that is to maintain something in its original state or, I mean, its original or existing state, right? So the act of preserving or keeping safe, the act of keeping from injury, destruction or decay as the preservation of life or health. The, the preservation of buildings from fire decay, the preservation of grain from insects, the preservation of fruits or plants. When a thing is kept entirely from decay or nearly in its original state, we say it is in a high state of preservation, right? So what does this all mean, right? Why did I go into all these definitions and talk about all this different stuff? Um, well, I'll tell you, right? When it comes to when it comes to preserving, right? The thing to understand that God is turning around and telling us, right? That God wants us to 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 get to, right? Is first we have to be it. Then we have to do it. Then we have to maintain it. We have to be it. We have to do it. We have to maintain it. But I got you. That's not good enough, right? That's not good enough because your question is still but what are we preserving? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still here. I'm still here. I got you. I got you. So one more time, right? Before I answer that question, Matthew 24 and 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away, all right? Psalm 119, 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. John 17 and 8. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. And then First Peter, well, First Peter one, right, twenty four to twenty five. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. Well, thank you, Peter, for spoiling where I was getting at. <laughs> God's word is the preservative, right? So before I answer your question, it's important to understand God's word is the preservative. Me and you do not have the ingredients necessary to do such a strong task, right? Without the word in us, coming out of us, right? Without God. We're not preserving anything without God in the midst, right? So we are encouraged, we are commanded, we are charged with sharing that to the people, to ourselves, to our loved ones, to our friends, to a stranger. Oh, <laughs> right? We're charged with doing that, right? This is what we have to do. So, for the final time for this question, what are we preserving? I got you. Here's the answer. We are preserving the soul. We're preserving the soul. We need to know what all this is for, what Revelation was getting at, what Jesus was talking about, what God is looking at. Everything about yourself is all encompassed in that soul. The one that God breathed life into, allowed to move, gave it a body, right? Dwells with. It's all encompassed in that.
So the reason why that's important is because if we are to preserve something that is so pure, that was given life, that God poured his essence into, right? To do something so powerful, we need something more powerful in us to overcome the decaying nature that can destroy that soul. It's a lot of power required. So that's why it's very important to understand that God is the preservative, right? It takes a lot to preserve something as precious, as spiritual, as pure, as a soul. Because again, that's what you want, right? Because Matthew 16 and 26 says this, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? But you after that, I'm trying to I'm trying to drill it in your mind that this is important. Right? The soul is it. If you lose that, what do you have? Psalm 62 and 1, right? Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. And then you have Matthew 10 and 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Right? We're trying to figure out who that one is. Uh, God is the only one to turn around and capable of that, right? So, again, we have to protect this. So... Your death, right? If you think about it this way, right? Keeping in the keeping in the nature of preserving, right? And understanding, understanding the soul. Your death, the decay, the destruction, the corruption, the darkness, the evil, all that becomes per permanent when it overcomes your soul. When your whole spiritual essence is gone, right? Because again. The important thing to understand, because we say this a lot, we say vessel, we say, we say, okay, these are, these are temporary and everything like that. But you need to also understand that you're not a soul trapped in the vessel, right? Every part of what was given to you in this body, right, is attached to that soul. So the more damage you take from the outside, going to the inside, the more damage that soul is taking, the more decay that soul is taking, the more it's getting overwhelmed, right? All of that goes hand in hand. You can't shrug it off. So it's all important. Because again, when God breathed life, he didn't just turn around and ignore the body and just breathe life into one thing, breathe life into the whole thing. And allow it to move, Right? So why do I tell you all this, right? Because in order to preserve a soul, we need to make sure that we are pouring the right ingredients on it. So what are you talking about? Did you know that there's bad preservatives? <laughs> oh, you thought I wasn't going to go there. Oh, no, I got you. I know the first thing in your mind was like, oh, hey, man, that's great and all, but uh, I don't know if you know this, but preservatives can be bad for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know how they become bad for you when they're not natural right when it has synthetic items that means artificial stuff right when it's chemical composition is altered that means it's not real to its true form right again it's not natural and the reason why that is important to know is because when it's bad, it can create a lot of things that help that decay instead of stop it. A lot of things that help that corruption instead of stop it. A lot of things that help that darkness instead of stop it. Right? So it's important that we're not out here sprinkling the wrong stuff on everybody, causing more decay. Mother Charlotte turned around and talked about in her sermon, right? 
Can't be sitting here sprinkling our own mess on somebody else's mess. That's not that's not canceling out nothing. <laughs> we both going down. <laughs> right? So what happens if we sprinkle the wrong stuff, right? Well, three ways, right? That's gonna really drive this home. Um, that's gonna really make the point. And it's gonna be heavy, but there's a purpose to this, right? So thinking about it in the physical sense, right? When preservatives are bad, right? They can cause, one of the things that they can cause is heart disease, right? These are things that are fatal to the heart, right? But if we think about it in the spiritual sense, right? These are fatal things that weaken the heart. Ah, uh, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. I hear you. That's not that's not good. You need an example, right? Um, idolizing, uh, condemning, conforming, omitting, right? Again, again, we got we got to be a preservative. We're doing these things. We're not preserving, right? These are fatal because they alter the soul. And fill it with things that are not of God, right? We're filling them with negativity. We're filling them with, with rage. We're filling them with regret. We're filling them with guilt. We're pushing them away. And so their heart, instead of changing for a heart that is for God, it's changing for a heart that is for this world. Because they feel rejected. They feel defeated. They don't feel like they're getting healing. We're wounding them more. We looked at the scar and we poked in it. And opened it back up. But I get it. That's not good enough. You need another one, right? So when we're the wrong preservative, the second thing that we can cause is breathing problems. We can make it hard for life to take place, right? For it to stay healthy, right? Ah, oh, no. Let's 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 flip that, right? Let's make it spiritual. We can make it hard for the soul to receive life, to receive the oxygen it needs, to be revitalized, to be restored. You need examples again? I got you. Chastising, crucifying, conflict. Blaming, damning. These are fatal. Why are they fatal, right? Because it causes the soul to decay further. They cut it off. We're not preserving nothing. We're not saving a soul. We're not saving a life by cutting it off. How's this supposed to function? When we moved it away from the source instead of towards it. There you go, the lovely, right? We're choking it. We move the very essence that it needs to exist. But you need one more. I got you. One more. When we're the wrong preservative. We cause cancer. Hmm. We cause cancer. What does that mean? We just make it worse. Or even worse than the initial problem itself. Right? Because their problem was one thing. But then now when we come by, spewing all our hot mess, right? Projecting. Turn around spewing emotions over them. Right? Not showing mercy. Right? When we do all this stuff, right? Now we just added a whole new layer to their problem. Now you the problem. Now God's the problem, right? Because that's the image that you came in. That's the first thing you spouted before you had the conversation with them. Well, God told me this. And then you started turning around and digging into them. So now God is now caught up in the mess that you created. So now instead of seeing them as loving, instead of seeing them as healing, Instead of seeing him as Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh, right? Now he's a hater. Now he's evil. Now he's destructive. Now he's war hungry, conflict driven. That don't sound like my God. 
But you need more examples, right? What does this? Shaming, avoiding people, rejecting people, degrading people. These are cancers. The leadership meeting we talked about it yesterday, right? My wife showed us this. Um, my wife showed me this video that I shared with them, and I'll, um, I'll share it in the signal too, right? There's this lady who was doing satanic stuff. I think I brought it up in a Bible study before, but she was doing satanic stuff, right? Um, just keep it in a nutshell. Keep it keep it simple. She was doing satanic stuff, and then God finally reached her and was like, "Hey, stop!" And she just pretty much woke up and she was like. I need to stop. Got rid of her house that was associated to sat satanic stuff. Got rid of all the stuff that was in the house that was associated to satanic stuff. Moved out of the place where she lived at that was associated to satanic stuff, right? Did a whole 360. Now, Revelation rejoices if just one person, right, is coming back home to God. And you would think that's exactly where this is going to go. Absolutely not. You know what some of the people in the kingdom of God did? Said that she was faking it. What are we doing? Right? This lady is connected to about 7 million people, right? A change like that can alter a lot of lives, right? Because if she can do it and she was that deep inside of it, just imagine what these people are seeing. And here comes all the saints turning around and saying that you're not really for the father. You're fake. Why? Why? How are we preserving this soul? How are we saving this soul if we are rejecting and shaming her, right? Because we want to stay attached to what she did. Let's talk about what you did. Should we stay attached to that too? Can we point you out and shun you out? It was to the point where it was so sad that she made this change, right? Hoping to also influence her husband to make the change. And he's on the fence because he sees what's happening to her. She sees how she's being treated. And he's like, I don't want no part of that. Well, there goes God's image. There goes the door. Jesus was going to come on and knock, but he didn't even get allowed to even reach up to the door. What are we doing? Right? So these are fatal because they leave the soul helpless it creates no defense the reason why it's so destructive and this is very important to understand is it leaves it completely and utterly exposed leading to its immediate destruction i don't know if you know anything about cancer but despite modern medicine it still is a one hit ko factor right majority of the times death is what you're looking at So if we're going around being that, we are killing everybody. Like, take this personal. If we are not going to preserve, you are killing that soul. That blood is on your hands now. Because there was a moment of interaction. It was an important moment that God was using them for, to preserve, to save that soul, to bring them back to Christ, right? To give them a heart of repentance, to move them back towards faith. And you decided to take matters into your own accord, right? We decided to take matters into our own accord and turn that person away from God. My Lord, I, I can't even begin to even imagine what a God <laughs> is looking at after that. I just told you, souls is it for God, right? That is important. That is the precious thing. And if we're going around destroying it, the only question is what are we doing? What are we doing, right? But I'm not going to leave you like that because <laughs> it's important to understand what makes a good preservative. Right? So, a good preservative prevents 
deterioration from enzymes, microorganisms, exposure to oxygen. What does that mean? It stops the bad stuff. The things that want to create decay, the things that want to destroy it from the inside out, the things that want to remove anything that's good and eliminate it so there's no defects, there's nothing protecting it. So, when it comes to these chemical preservatives, right, we got to ensure that as preservatives, right, not just for ourselves, but for the people we interact with, for our loved ones, right, for our friends, we got to make sure that, one, we're non-toxic. What does that mean? Not poisonous, right? We're not inserting things to further bring down that person's soul, right? So even when God turns around and creates a moment where you got to literally deal with the person who hurts you, I got news for you. You still got to come to them non-toxic. You can't bring the baggage of five years to that person. God don't care about your baggage. He's after the soul. If you get into a random conversation and all of a sudden uh, uh, a thug turns around and sees the light, right? And just randomly ends up having a conversation with you. I get it. That guy was a killer. But guess what? God ain't worry about that right now. God wants the soul. The addict on the street who's been drinking the bottle and you absolutely are sure that he's been doing drugs, right? And just one of these random days, right? He just turns around and catches you on a Tuesday and he's like, Lord, help me. I get it. He don't smell too good. You're not exactly sure if he's in his right state of mind, right? You don't know where he's been. You don't know what he's been doing. But guess what? God don't care about all of that. God wants the soul. Non-toxic, right? Readily soluble. So without difficulty or delay. The true difference between saving the soul is the time we take to be obedient to God when God is instructing us to share, turn around and share that good news. Right? That five-second hesitation you took, that soul's gone. That moment it crossed your heart and you were like, ah, should I do it? Ah, maybe I shouldn't do it. Ah, I'm in traffic right now, so you know, I, I, I got to kind of get home. Never mind, I won't stop at the side of the road and talk to that person. That was an opportunity. That time is precious, Right? A family member who came out of nowhere and reached out to you and you haven't talked to this person in 10 years and you took the time to worry about the 10 years it took for this person to reach back out to you instead of that moment right there where they are calling out for help. That time is precious. Right? We had a moment like that, right? My mom's brother literally randomly just came. Right? We didn't even know he was coming. Or at least I don't think we knew he was coming. Just came, right? And begging, pleading for help. He came off normal and then in the midst of the conversation was pleading for help. Right? We could have stopped that there. We could have turned around and moved him on his way. We could have not even answered the door, right? But we let him in. We turned around, went through all of that, let him go through his stuff. And we helped him. Right? And whether he's still going through his journey or not, he's still turning around and deciphering out there. He has a fighting chance. Because we took that time serious. Right? Preservatives fight the long battle. It's not a one, one and done. It's the long game. Right? And that word you give somebody can help them on the long game of that fight. But if we leave them exposed and they have nothing to defend themselves, that long game is going to be short. Right. The next thing that we got to make sure that we're doing is we're not imparting off flavors. Right. Well, what does that mean? Undesirable compounds. Right. You didn't take it in your time. You didn't take the time that God turned around and told you to save the soul to fill them up with stuff. God ain't tell you to tell them. Right. God ain't tell you to prophesy to this person and tell them all this other stuff that, you know, for a fact, God didn't tell you turn around, and tell you to tell them. Right. God didn't tell you to turn around and, and bring up their, their, their stuff from the past and start going deep into the vault 
and start bringing up, well, you know when you did this, well, you know when you did this, and I've been keeping track record of that. God didn't tell you to do that. God didn't tell you to turn around and go shame, 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 shame. God didn't tell you to do that. So when we're imparting off these undesirable compounds, right, we're not being preservatives. The next part, and bear with me because I know this word is long, <laughs> right? We exhibit antimicrobial properties over the pH range of the food, right? I got you. That was a word thing. <laughs> Here, let me make it simple. I see you, the lovely. Things that overpower and stop growth of important things, right? We're making sure we're not that. So our job, when we come in to be a preservative, is to ensure the things inside them are strengthened. How are they strengthened? By turning around and letting God open the door, bringing their faith back, restoring them, getting them to repentance, building their faith back up, right? All these things are internal things that need to be strengthened. Putting the power back in them. We talked about that yesterday too. If we're not putting power back into this person, we're being judgmental, right? We're not judging, we're being judgmental. And we're depowering this person. We're not letting God turn around and take over, right? We're killing the important things in them. We're not strengthening the things in them that would activate if they just came across the right preservative, right? We're not strengthening their Holy Spirit, right? We're not strengthening their faith, right? These are important things that need to grow. So if we're not helping them grow it, we're killing that soul further. And this next part. We got to be economical and practical. What does that mean? Not wasteful and effective. These interactions have to matter. Right? What we say to them has to matter. How we deal with them has to matter. How we deal with ourselves has to matter. What we say to ourselves has to matter. And fill in the blank, your loved one. The neighbor across the street. The guy who cut you off while you were in traffic. <laughs> I knew that one would get a face. <laughs> but that's the matter, right? Because all these interactions, right, are the difference maker between whether or not they're for the kingdom of God or they're for the kingdom of evil. Because there's a kingdom of evil. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I would love to look you in the face and tell you that kingdom of evil doesn't have the numbers right now, but they definitely do. And it's because these interactions that we're doing, we're not putting God in it. And we're not doing our due diligence, right? We're not being preservatives. So, what would that be? God, his word, salvation, forgiveness, repentance, grace. Jesus, I can keep going, <laughs> right? These are the things we got to sprinkle on people, right? Love, these are the things we got to sprinkle on people. Patience. We got to be the representative image of God, right? That's how you be salt. If they are not seeing that, you're not salt. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about God and what he is after. And what he is after is the soul. The restoration of it. To bring it back into the fold. To keep it pure. To remove all the stains that's trying to corrupt it. Right? So, if you do all of this, right? If you do, if you be the right preservative to people. And we go with them with love. We go with them to Christ, right? And we truly are representing. You know what ends up happening? We, that person, whoever you're speaking to at that moment, gains perseverance. Why is that important? Because perseverance is being persistent despite the difficulties or delays we face, which 
Got news for each and every person on here to include myself. It's going to be an everyday battle. There's always something that you got to wait for. There's always another difficulty around the corner. There's always another trial ahead, right? That is just what this life has for us because this life understands who we belong to. This life understands who we are. The enemy understands whose we are. So if you think they're going to just let you walk by singing your ABCs like this is Sesame Street, they're not. You got to be ready for that. We got to be ready for that. We got to equip people and help them become ready for that. Because there's a lot of people walking around blind right now. Again, as Mother Charlotte said, right? There's a lot of people walking around blind right now who don't know that. And they need to see. Not with the physical eyes, but with the spiritual ones. So... That's all I got. <laughs> great word, great word, Julian. Mm -hmm.